Hello everybody, in this video we will discuss about the nucleophilic addition reactions of aldehyde and ketone. So both of this aldehyde and ketone react exactly same way. So if you learn one of these, uh, you can easily exchange that with a ketone as well. So we are doing this reactions with ketone here, so aldehyde will also react similarly. So let's just do a quick recap. So you remember carbonyl is sp2 hybridized so this carbon atom here is sp2 hybridized right and what is the structure of sp2 hybridized the structure of sp2 hybridized carbon atom is trigonal planner right so trigonal planner so you can see here it is on this plane right here and if we have a nucleophile that is negatively charged so what would happen? So now this nucleophile could come from the top, could come from the bottom. Okay, now the question is why I'm drawing this arrow towards carbon atom. So here is why. So if you know the electronegativity of carbon and oxygen, so carbon is slightly less and oxygen is slightly more electronegative. So as a result, so you will see a partial negative charge because oxygen is pulling electron towards itself and carbon uh, is lacking electron. So as a result, the carbon atom in the carbonyl group is electrophilic. Okay, let's recap that. So carbon atoms in this carbonyl group is electrophilic. So this one here, so this carbon atom is electrophilic. So this carbon atom atom is electrophilic. So this means it will love electron. So who has electron? It turns out our nucleophile has electrons. So every time you have a nucleophile, it would go towards that carbon atom. Because it is planar structure, the nucleophile could approach from the top or bottom. Uh, and it will have stereochemistry implications, okay? So that's the basic reactions that you will be thinking about when you're uh, trying to do a nucleophilic addition reaction. So let's try to do what would happen. So let's say uh, for, for the simplicity purposes, let's say our nucleophile attack from the top. Uh, again, it could go from the bottom. So I'm just doing it for the sake of it. So how does our structure would look like? Well, it looked like our nucleophile has approached from the top. So I'm going to draw the nucleophile here and the carbon atom with the stereocenter, if there is any, uh, will be here. And oxygen here is going to be on this side. And okay. So the oxygen is going to be on the plane here as well. And then we're going to have two groups that's gonna be pointing on either side. So maybe if we do R1 here, R2 here, then I'll just write R1 and R2. So that's the basic reaction. So here is one thing you noticed, uh, when the nucleophile approach, what, what is happening to this uh, high bond here? So you notice carbon has already four bonds. If you add another bond on top of it, it will have five bonds. So to, to maintain the octet, it will push the pi electron towards oxygens, okay? So now I'm gonna delete a bunch of things to make it clearer. Okay, so you can see now our picture looks a lot clearer. So you notice the nucleophile approach and in order to maintain the octet, it will push the pi electron towards oxygen. So when the oxygen get pushed, when the electron get pushed away towards oxygen, you see there is a negative charge, okay? So uh, that's the uh, intermediate that you will be making. Now, can you compare the geometry of this structure here versus the geometry of this structure here? So this was trigonal planar, right? but this one is tetrahedral, right? So this one is tetrahedral structure here. This one is tetrahedral and this one is trigonal planar. Okay, so uh, this one was sp2 hybridized. 
what kind of hybridizations here? The structure is sp3 hybridized carbon atoms right here. So this one is called tetrahedral intermediate for that reasons. Okay. So this is about the stereochemistry. So you can have if uh, you can have another enantiomers of this product as well. Okay. So this is the basics of any type of reactions. So let's look at our reagent that we have here. So uh, I will ignore the stereochemistry because this is not going to be uh, a stereo center here. So how you would react? So let's say you have CH3MGBR. Okay, so uh, we know that this would react. So this would react as if this is CH3 minus. Okay, so this CH3 minus will go and attack this carbon atom. So let's do that. Why? Because the carbon atom is going to be delta positive. This one would be delta negative. So this CH3 minus would go attack here. And in order to maintain the octet, the pi electron would be pushed towards the oxygens. So let's draw the intermediate that we will be making. So it will be CH3, C, O minus, CH3. And the new incoming CH3 is here. So this is tetrahedral intermediate. Okay, so here's one thing uh, you wanna keep an eye on. So tetrahedral intermediate with AO negative ions is unstable and it wants to go back to this sp2 hybridized state by removing one of the group. Now in this case, none of the groups can be uh, removed. So this is something you will learn when we discuss uh, in the chapter of carboxylic acid derivative, uh, where this O negative will remove a group. But in this case, both CH3, CH3, CH3 minus are a uh, strong base, which means they are very bad leaving groups. So we cannot kick out any groups here. So all we have to do at this point is neutralize the negative charge here by adding extra proton. So I'm going to add extra proton. So in questions like this, you will see extra proton gets added. Uh, either it will be written like this H plus. Some questions will be written like H3O plus. Uh, some questions might just add water. So it doesn't matter what's written there. Uh, all you care about is to neutralize this negative charge right there. So our product would be CH3CO, uh, CH3, and OH. And that's it. So we created... So we started with a ketone. So we started with a ketone and we ended, we ended up with a tertiary alcohol, right? So this was a tertiary alcohol. So ketone, when react with the Grignard reagent CS3MGBR, we ended up with a tertiary alcohols. So let's do one more example and then uh, we'll move on to the next set of reactions. So let's say we have something like this. So maybe this time I will use an aldehyde, CH3COH. Okay, so this one will give uh, a stereo center. So um, may, uh, I will create something like this. Let's say we got phenyl MGBR. Okay, so this is... Uh, so this is a Grignard reagent. So uh, this group here is phenyl group right there. Uh, you can see questions, either the benzene is written all the way or you can see it's written like this. So this would react as if, so would react as if this is pH minus phenyl group or uh, how it would react it will react like that is a negative charge right here and MGBR plus. Okay, so uh, so we'll follow the simple rule, the negative, the nucleophile attacking the carbon because carbon is delta positive, oxygen is delta negative. Then uh, we will push the pi electron towards oxygen. So we ended up 
looking like this, CS3, C, O minus, H, and you noticed here, the benzene ring get attached right there. So this is a stereo center. So uh, obviously it's gonna be a racemic mixture of both ingredients, right? So um, now at this point, the next step would be to neutralize it. So when you neutralize it with H plus or H3O plus, we are gonna get CS3, CO, H, So the phenyl group get attached here. Okay, so uh, again, let's do, so we started with an aldehyde and we ended up with a secondary alcohol. So if you start with an aldehyde, you will always end up with a secondary alcohols. Okay, so um, you can do uh, this product with proper stereochemistry if you want to. So I might as well draw this one. So uh, you get OH, uh, H. So there is the phenyl group here, and there is the methyl group here, uh, plus the enantiomer. So the enantiomer of this would be it's the mirror image of this thing. So phenyl group here uh, and CS3 group right there. So it's just a stereo center. Just know that we can have both of the product. All right. Okay, let's stop here.